Wait, 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 one, one of these. <laughs> oh. Yes. Damn these blokesy blues, it happens every night. Do you know the words? I, I do know the words. I'm just terrible at singing them. You're not. <laughs> I have not. Dar- neither is Darian. No. He never treats me kind. It leaves trouble on my mind. So I'm bidding farewell, putting in my nose. Here we go, Darian. Go. Darian. Darian is fishing. This <laughs> I'm not. Darian is not singing. Darian is. No. I don't care. Where are we headed? We're headed here. Yeah, headed this way. Your way, right there. Right to the hook, right here. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there. Low, really low budget today. <laughs> Y'all can see. Really, if you can see us now. <laughs> All oh, you folks out there, you low lifers, low budget life coming to you. It's it's not the LBL Bar and Grill. It is not. We are at the Y'all Sweet Tea. What are you calling this? The Emporium? The Emporium would be good. Emporium? What do you call it? the HQ? Sounds cool. It sounds like a cooler name than what it really is. The Y'all HQ? Y'all Sweet Tea HQ. I'm with that. I'm with the Y'all Sweet Tea HQ. But ladies and gentlemen, low lifers, uh, if you're new to the show, that's what we like to call you, the low lifers. That's what the listeners of this fine program like to refer to themselves as. But I want to introduce you to a guy, if you don't know him, but this is my buddy, Darian is fishing, one of my besties that I like to share a glass of sweet tea, tea with. And y'all sweet tea, we're here at the headquarters. Hang on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Right oh, yeah, it is It is good. It just hits It hits on a different level than all that other, you know, tea that's out there. But uh, at Darien is fishing, and we decided to do something different today. I, I wanted to come down here to celebrate my dude. It's cool to run around with folks that you are like, that you can get invested in, that you can be excited for. And Darian, y'all, all y'all that keep up with him, he launched Y'all Sweet Tea yesterday. We're recording this on Sunday. This is the podcast for Monday, April the 12th. Yep. And April 10th was a big day for you. And now we decided we'd do an LBL from right here. Yeah. So what yeah. do you, now that you are a, 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 in another yet another business. Yet another business. What do you think? Uh, it was awesome. Um, like Luke said, obviously, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I've got a fishing channel, but aside from that, um, we we sell sweet tea. So we came up with this a couple of years ago, and like he said, yesterday was the launch of our newest product, which is yeah. a, a bagged form that you can buy anywhere online, yallsweettea.com. Um, you can buy it so you can make it at your house, and that's something that we wanted to do is be able to expand, get this tea in front of everybody, the best tea you've ever had, the best sweet tea specifically you've ever had, and... Um, yeah, it's super exciting. But they can go unsweet. They can go unsweet. You, you can do unsweet. You, you can do Yankees, however you want to do if it. If you're up there in, up in the North Country, and you're yeah. like, you know, I don't like sugar in my tea, which you're wrong for that. You're wrong I'm for look that. look you right in that camera and tell you you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You're wrong. But so. Yeah, so it's ba- It's just bags. So you follow our recipe on the back of the bag. There's a couple of very specific instructions, which as a, as just an average consumer, you don't realize is an important part. But if you, if you, we've done a lot of studying and tea making, and there is some actually scientific stuff that goes on when you make tea so we've we've listed all that out we spelled out made it really easy to make it's kind of a fun process it's a unique recipe and um yeah so we're selling sweet tea selling tea that you can make sweet sweet or unsweet caffeinated or decaffeinated yep we just came out of the giddy just hard selling that ass. Oh, look, right out of the lie. gate, just selling. We just went, we went <laughs> to sell it. That's not the only reason I'm here. I wanted to do, a, I wanted to do, uh, uh, kind of get back to the basics. I told y'all last week in my uh, podcast that so many of y'all watched and reached out about that. I, I appreciate all the support. It was insane. And I said, I want to get back to doing things like I used to do them. And this show started because of me and this guy and Corey Williams, our buddy Big C. And we were doing it live just on Instagram. So I know y'all just see me every week, but there's a lot of people in the squad, as we call them, that have my back, that make all this possible. And this guy pushing me to do this was one of the main reasons I started. So I'm down here wanting to give some y'all sweet tea shout outs and just record a podcast. We got a great guest today for y'all. Y'all go and enjoy it. And Darian being a fish head that he is, uh, 
I think he's missed yeah. some LBS. Yeah, I have. And the, the thing that, going back to when we started them, we were always together. It was it was pre-COVID. We traveled a bunch. That's right. We, That's we, the key to all In the time, we were all at TH together every single like day. Daily, yeah. So, you know, we were always bouncing these ideas off each other, and that's how this started. But now that working from home became a thing, Corey's – it's like we have a we have a triangle of distance, all three of us, <laughs> and right. we can't get together. It's just like a two-hour drive for all of us. So, unfortunate, we watch the shows. We talk about the shows every day, but – And we talk crap. And we talk a lot of crap. We talk a lot of crap. Of course, we, Darian, we spill the tea. Darian and I do the uh, show up, shut up, and hopefully y'all have seen that and you like that. If you haven't seen it, go check them out on his channel, my channel. I would uh, just watch Luke's channel on those because I <laughs> <laughs> just stay on, just no, stay on Luke's I channel. On those I want them to see yeah, your tears. Yeah, they've I been. They have not. Tears. They haven't been too good to my me. My favorite yet. thing is on the like the Lake Record video. There's just so many just comments. People going. You just beat him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like you call big ones. Well, out there. The, fun, the, the the strange thing about, and I, I will say this: the strange <laughs> thing about filming with somebody in the back of the boat when you're editing that, you can't. You so when we're editing, you see yeah. the, the audio lines, and you kind of judge what's going on in a fishing trip by the audio lines. Because typically, when there's more audio lines, either hey, dude, I just caught one, or Excited. it's something happening. But one with me and Luke, we talk the entire time, so there's a lot of audio lines that we can't ever keep up. But the other <laughs> thing is too, I don't hear your sound of setting the hook so it's like a lot of them you just miss you just mm -hmm. miss the guy in the back's fish catches which is unfortunate but it's two different videos too and that's cool yeah it I is like cool that. um it's cool too like i had a couple really cool shots of you from my chesty that it wasn't yeah, on your video yeah and on the flip side you had the chesty shot of me grabbing your right I'm like oh, the yeah. video wasn't that cool on my video the, that part of the video wasn't as cool on mine but your point of view of seeing me picking that fish up, I thought it was, was cool. Really well, cool. your face when you picked up yeah, that yeah. thing that I screen grabbed yeah. was was awesome. Uh, but make sure you subscribe to this dude's channel. We're gonna do a whole low budget live for you. This will be one of those where some some people will be like, go to 16 minutes in. That's when it gets good. That's when I like it the best. When they quit talking about them, yeah. the guys with the show. When they quit talking about themselves with the microphones and then they get into the other stuff. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors before we get in thick in this bass fishing world today. Sweet Tea World. We're going we're gonna to talk all kinds of stuff. We're going to put our guests on the spot today about Sweet cool. Tea. Sweet Tea and cigarettes, as a matter of fact. I think <laughs> two subjects we're going to talk about today. I want to thank our sponsors, those StarTron who have been with us since the beginning. And Darian will tell you we put a bottle of StarTron in the low-budget live stuff at the Forcewood Cup at Lake Murray that Justin Atkins won when we were going to do one of these. And I was like, brought to you by StarTron. Almost as a joke. Yeah. As a joke. <laughs> they sponsored me on the FLW Tour, and then they were like, hey, we really like that thing you did. And I'm like, okay, well, let's do this. So going on, it'll be four years. Can you believe that? That's four crazy. years in freaking August. That's crazy. But four years since we started this, StarTron kicking ethanol in the teeth. In your weed eater, in your chainsaw, in your lawnmower. Uh, I had to do some of that this week. Not a big fan, but I had to. And uh, start trying. I, I put it in there in the winter because you're going to leave a little gas in your in your lawnmower. You know, you ain't going to yeah. get it all out of there. And that uh, I, I'm too cheap to buy that ethanol free. And uh, I like a start trying, and they pay me for it. So <laughs> <laughs> as Gerald Swindle says, he drank him out there, and they drank me, and I'm paying him for it. They're paying me for it. But uh, Star Trying, kicking ethanol on the tee, Star Bright Cleaning Solutions, taking care of all your dirty boat problems. They make some great stuff, man. And I just want to thank them. Uh, as always, uh, nothing ruins a good day on the water like an outboard engine that won't run. The fine folks at Sims, a new sponsor for this year, Sims Fishing Products, just really making me look better than I am most of the time. Uh, Hudson and I fished a tournament yesterday where – it was ridiculously uh, windy and raining all day long. Not the best weather to be out there with your 13-year-old in, but we were suited up in them Sims rain gear, and uh, it was good. It was all good, man. I, I'm, I've been blown away by those, uh, by that suit, and I've been blown away by this, the show. I'm, I'm all, I'm kind of got the drip you got today. The drip going. I, everything but the flip flops. Get at me, Sims. I don't have any of your flip flops right now, so I'm not, I'm not wearing any of those. But uh, I'm here to remind all you low lifers: you get one life, fish it well. Pro Guide batteries, something that Darian and I were talking about before I went on. I forgot to charge my batteries after a day on Pickwick on Friday in the current craziness uh, for Hudson and I's tournament yesterday, which is on a small, idle only lake. Y'all have heard me talk about it. We're on the trolling motor. Seven hours yesterday, my batteries are still like 80%. Like, I'm so blown away by their AGM batteries and running the power pole charge this year, which I do, do think helps a lot, but 
like these batteries, like I, 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 t I tell you all every week, I've tried to kill them and I can't. I get a lot of messages about these. Thank you all for reaching out about that. You can use code LBL10 to get you a little hitter. And you you got some pro guides too, right? Yeah, you, yeah I got If some. you ever get, if I ever if get you ever to use my boat, I will boat, gladly yeah. use my battery. If you ever quit selling the sweet tea, which I don't yeah. think that's going to happen now. But uh, pro guide sponsoring D-Money this year, gonna got him some batteries for his new Ranger. That's uh, crazy to think about how long you use them, like. Two entire trips, the two first, specifically the first one, all in the current. Like you're fishing the current, current. your batteries are current. shot. Yeah, and then two. Oh, that's that's cool. Well, and and I'll be honest, when I realized the next morning, Saturday morning, Hudson, and I got up, I was like, oh no, I didn't plug in, and I said something to him. He's like, what, Dad? I said, this might not be good because the cranking battery you got your grass on, then you're running pumps on a lake like that where you're not running around, you're not it recharging that. Yeah. So I had 12.1 volts at the end of the day. Running pumps all day long, keeping fish alive. It was crazy. But I uh, want to thank the folks from Pro Guide. And last but not least, and this is uh, it's another big week for these boys, but the official boat sponsor of Low Budget Live and the Traveling Circus, Express boats hot springs arkansas running that x21 this year blown away made another believer out of our buddy david allen was with me on friday and he just kept saying there's no way this is a luna boat there's no way you yeah. i was so impressed with it like you got four days worth or five i days was worth. super impressed with it there was one day specifically at the very end we had we were fishing with justin royal he got out of the boat it's when i mean it's the windiest day i ever lived in <laughs> and there's a white cap and like crazy and luke's like dude hang on i don't know like if we're going to test this boat, it's going to be today. And, dude, they're, like, we're getting to some stuff that, like, legitimately white-knuckled holding on. And I was, like, I was crazy impressed. It cuts right through them. It was – that's no sponsor plug. And we went nose, nose into them, fishing we went in nose too, into like, them. anchor locked up. It was it was cool. But I, I had it in some really stuff, rough stuff on Wheeler two weekends ago. I was blown away. Um, but just everything, man. The sea deck. And I've never had a boat where I get that many questions about it. Everybody wants to talk about it. The tournament yesterday was, like, 40, 50 boats, and everybody's like – Man, what they just want to know. Like they want to talk about that boat. Down at Pickwick Friday, they want to talk about the boat. The talk. other thing, like I've the Sea Deck looks cool. Everybody knows the Sea Deck looks cool. And I'm saying this as a fan. I'm a fan of Sea Deck. I've never even had a boat with Sea Deck. I just hate carpet. But we efficient in those waves, you had water coming over the front. The, the you know, the deck gets soaking yeah. wet and it instantly dried back up. So I was thinking about that yesterday. My boat was left outside at the dealership, and it got soaking wet. Carpet was soaking wet. So I've had this huge, huge fan, like it's on wheels, tilted down on my carpet for two days, and I had to, like, move that thing around the whole time. And I'm like, dude, Luke's sea deck instantly dried off. Instantly. <laughs> like yesterday, it would stop raining for a little bit, and then within, like, 30 minutes, yeah. you're good to go again. You can sit down on it whenever. It was crazy. But uh, Express Boats, building excitement since 1966, and uh, – Getting them another Elite Series dub. Moving on to bass fishing out of these sponsor plugs. But Jason Chrissy, big congrats. Jason Chrissy with an IE, of course. The one and only, the real Jason Chrissy OG. Uh, who, by the way, like watching Bass Live, is there a better <laughs> – is there a better spinnerbait fisherman, no. first of all? And I'll probably piss somebody off. It's a buddy of mine. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I am. But it's like watching – I don't know. I, like, I'm, I'm at a loss watching this morning just these little short underhand roll casts. And I've watched Jimmy Houston, I will say. Like, Jimmy in person with a spinnerbait is one of the most impressive things you'll ever see in your entire life. I got to watch that go down a couple times, fish in the same areas with him on tour. And he's known for that, right? Like, he, he, like he came up with a lot yeah. of that, right? But, man, Jason's just so efficient. And to win that freaking tournament – Running a long ways in an as express, but not only is it a big year for him that, that for that reason, he switched boat companies, been with Ranger forever. Now he's an express like I am. You made an aluminum switch this year, too. A lot of guys switching, so back to back wins for express. But Jason getting used to the boat wins one, making a crazy long run. The area floods out going into day three, changes six feet, he says, from where it had been. Decides to make the run again. It's like a two-hour run. Decides to, got back with a half gallon of gas on day three. Holy. That's what Shanna told me. But a uh, little insider info. Took a ton of stuff out of his boat to conserve fuel, to not be as heavy. Like, just was fishing with, like, two boxes. She sent me a picture. Took a Ziploc bag of spinnerbaits. Truly, like, spinnerbaits, a couple square bills, like, nothing else. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll post a picture in this video. I'll get permission to post a picture. But like, it's... He took everything out. Like, everything was calculated. Got up there and just stomped them in, like, 30 minutes. First two days, he's done. Comes back. And then yesterday got a little tougher, but he still had the lead. And today knocks out just eight pounds. 
which my favorite, by the way, I want to say this. I heard a guy turn and go, did you see what they're catching in Sabine River? I'm like, I I can do that. I'm like, no, wait a second. <laughs> You're saying it's like Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a Wheeler <laughs> Wilson eight pounds or Pickwick eight pounds. This is a Bean River where eight yeah. pounds is a big deal. Yeah. Okay. But, dude, let me ask you, do you like tournaments like that? Where it's not because we got two major tournaments going on right yeah. now. We're going to talk about both. It's just, and it's and both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, opposite it's both ends of the spectrum. spectrum. I mean, I think every year we need a couple of, like, w- one per tour or maybe two per tour, but that. The last year, the COVID year, yeah. they had all those fall tournaments, and like there was many, many rough tournaments in a row. I personally, as a fan, did not like that with all those rough tournaments. But I think in the grind, fall, you didn't like that. You said no, you just because there were like so many that low that weight tournaments. Struggle. Bam, bam, bam. But I think these are these kind of cool. Like it's springtime, they should be biting. But you're at a place where there's not it's not big ones. Like yeah, I they, were I, they, like they, they were biting. They were biting. They were biting. Yeah, there's no big ones. I think that's cool. And and they had you know. That area has been battled by her, you know, bashed by hurricanes, whatever. But then you look at the weigh-in crowds. Insane. It was nuts to see. It was like it, it's always been down there. So they're going to keep going back down there. And I like I liked the tournament. Like, yeah. Lee Livesey ran to, like, almost Mexico or something <laughs> today. <laughs> and there's nobody better in bro fishing. Like, yeah. I like Lee on camera. He's He and his camera guy, he was like, that was crazy. What? <laughs> like, they went across Galveston Bay in his freaking boat. Insane, insane tournament. And Zona kept saying that, like, this is one of the most interesting elite series we've ever covered. And it was, man. There was just so much going on. And uh, to see uh, Christy win, and I got, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a family guy, so I got to go uh, Team Express here. Yep. Another cat that made him a top five, Caleb Summerall. Uh, I believe he ended up in the top five. I probably ought to check that. Yeah. Don't want to get yelled at. Fact Don't want to get yelled at. Little, little fact check real quick. Got it pulled up right here. Nope. Actually, Caleb Summerall ended up in seventh. He lost a good fish today. We we'll put him in the top five. Seth Fighter was six. Drew Cook, Chris Johnson, Taku Ito, and Brock Mosley in second place. Another second place for Brock Mosley. Dude is just not – like he's knocking on the freaking door so many times. I actually thought when Christy had the tough day yesterday, I was like – I don't know, man. Maybe it's Brock's time. And then he had apparently been running over to Houston, made the decision to stay close and fish kind of like release fish and just, I don't know if his fish yeah. just went away or whatever and then just, you know, couldn't get it done. Christy That's catches crazy. eight pounds and, and uh, he ends up second. So, I don't know, man. Christy's returned to the elites. It's it's That's cool. I, I said he would get – he started the year, had a rough one at St. John's, and Greg Hackney said it on this show, like, Pissed off Jason Christie's about Jason Christie. <laughs> yeah. I think you've pissed Jason Christie off a couple times, though. I probably have. I think so. Y'all went axe throwing one night. <laughs> By the way, if you ever think it's a good idea to go <laughs> axe throwing against Jason Christie, he's the one person you should not want to pick to do an axe throw with. Um, he's a he's a good axe thrower. Fa- a, fa- a little, little runs that. in the family. It runs Imagine in the family. That. It's in his DNA. Yeah, it runs in the family. He uh, so Jason's one of those cool, calm, collected dudes. And Darian and I talk a lot of crap. And Darian just, the one of the first times we ever really hung out with Jason much, Darian's just like, boy, I'll box you out. You like basketball? I'll bite. <laughs> and it only gets worse if there's alcohol. A little alcohol. A little alcohol goes a long ways. Gets a lot worse. And uh, they went axe throwing one night. I'll never forget, I'll never forget those, uh, that post, though. But super cool to see Jason back. So congrats to him. Got a Cox watch. Oh, Got to have the Cox watch. John Cox with that new haircut. It looks like he's in a boy band now. Uh, kind of like your hair. And even my hair. Like, I, I cut my hair trying to be more like Darian. Uh, and I, I kind of got that boy band hair now. But uh, 16th place. So, another another check for John. Shocker. When, yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Tough shallow water tournament. Shocker. John in finished in 16th place. I had a tough one at Pickwick, though, so it's good to see him. And he had a tough BPT out at uh, Rayburn. So, cool to see him kind of get it back on the uh, – the deal there and i want to i want to i gotta say this publicly uh <laughs> i said greg hackney was gonna blow out angler of the year and um he's had a couple kind of tough ones in a row and he's failed like seventh place and i'd like to apologize to Seth fighter <laughs> because yeah. fighters having he's fighter, fighter and patrick walters and then drew cooks in third like all those dudes are having really good freaking years man yeah and uh hackney was just coming out swinging it's like the opens and everything was going like that and i'm like He's got that energy. Now, look, I still don't think he's going anywhere, no, right? No. Like, we got a lot of really, you know, a lot of tournaments left to fish, but we're, what, four four elites in? I yep. mean, but Fighter is fishing out of his freaking mind yeah, this year. Is. So, is, so is Patrick. But uh, could it be freaking Seth's year, man? I don't know. I don't know. Could be. He's been close 
The dirty stash. The dirty stash. He's been the, close. The, the dirty, dirty stash. You, you were going to say something. I cut you off. I was going to say, but as I, while well, I was thinking about it, you might have already talked about this, but um, John Cox, Pickwick, Elite Series Tournament. He left that tournament and went straight to. Yeah, drove all night. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Drove, uh, had Melissa drive him all night. Yeah. That's crazy. Weighed one three pounder the first day, didn't catch him the second day. And then drove to BPT, shows up, was like, hey, I'm here, guys. And he didn't catch him the first day of BPT, but he did catch him the second, second day. Second day, yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> He's a machine, man. He, he truly he truly loves it. And then, oh, so, something else, Cox Watch cuts the hair, sends the hair to David Allen, our buddy David Allen Fishing. To make hair jigs. To make know. hair jigs. They're going to auction them off for freaking locks of love for cancer, for kids. And because John's like, nobody wants my nappy hair. Because, you know, normally the long hair, to cut it off. They give it to somebody yeah. to make a wig or whatever. But David, he got him last week. That is hilarious. And he's going to make hair jigs. I told him, I'm like, I'm buying one. I don't want you to auction one. Like, I want to buy one from you to have the LBL bar and grill. That is awesome. I it's didn't kind of gross, kind of nappy, but also very So cool. he's going to leave them the same color or dime white? No, no. He's just going to leave them the same color. Wow. That, that dyed, that uh, m M&M, <laughs> that m M&M blonde that he wow. was. Yeah, so Big Dave is going to, Diamond Dave, as I call him, is going to tie up freaking hair jigs uh, for, for Cox. Wow. What uh, how, you could get a bunch of hair jigs out of his hair. Oh, yeah. You get a dozen. He sends eight. an envelope. Dave sent me a picture of it. Like, it's an envelope full of hair. <laughs> this is gross. <laughs> it's so gross. No offense, John Boy. I love you. But it's, it's weird. Your hair is an envelope. It's kind of serial killer. It's almost like I send my hair to, to David <laughs> Allen. <laughs> But be on the lookout for that. It's going to raise some good money, uh, hopefully, for cancer and cancer research and stuff like that. Super cool. I'll, I'll, I'll let you all know when that goes down. You can have your very own John, John Cox, Cox hair, hair jig. Hair, hair jig. Uh, when did we start this? I'm going to well, I'll have to reset a camera in a minute. We're a long way. Through. So in the warehouse, we're sitting on a table. We're sitting on a Darian does a very bent-up table. Very I'm, bent I'm up like table. trying to prop us up. I am, too. And uh, we could go just falling through at any minute. I feel like it could happen. Uh, we're at one of Darian's. Which is like on, on par for something to have one yeah, of those, yeah. for this chair to fall. And Darian made this desk. Yes. It has wheels on it, yes. casters. Uh, it's one of their workstations here. And, uh, yeah, it really wasn't set up for a podcast studio. And I'm kind of a <laughs> podcast diva now. And I was like, oh, is this, is this where we're doing this? Oh, this. Kidding. Yeah, this, oh, this place. Hey, something I want to ask you before we move out of Bass Master okay. and move on. This thing is was sponsored by this week was Dovetail or some yeah, Bass Dove- Master video yeah. game. You're, you're younger than I am. You're a gamer. But... <laughs> Dude, can a bass fishing video game be popular? Y'all comment this in the comment. Like I, I, I know this is not like a controversial topic. Or no, my, I mean my thought is the video that Scott Martin posted. I guess they're redoing the game. Is that what it is? That's what I. That was my take on it. Maybe I'm wrong, but the graphics of it looked like you were watching fishing. So, I think the previously the problem is like. There's bad data in the game. So you catch a 97 pound largemouth, yeah, and you have the record with a 97 pound yeah, largemouth, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it's like. There's no brands, and we're also brand specific. You got the brand. so yeah. I think what that company did this it is kind of cool. They sold, I guess maybe sponsors or whatever, but they have real like you can get a DT6 or you can get. No, a, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's cool. You, so you can get like specific brand rods and rails and everything. So I think I think that's kind of cool. I haven't played the game yet, but I had a, a Super Black Bass on Super Nintendo, and I would yeah. mess you up on a frog <laughs> in the California Delta with Super Black Bass on Super Nintendo. Chris Mitchell from Bassmaster posted that this week and was like this this game right here and i'm like oh my god that took me back i used to rent it at video village large video Bartender, village video village. Video, village was the place. video village and uh super nintendo oh my gosh but that game but dude i, I, I don't know like yeah i don't know either but like, you can play online against people and stuff right because i think Scott i don't, was I don't know about that when he did this the first time yeah like you could play against him like he would go online and do that yeah i, I, I don't know i don't know I don't, I don't either but i do know man, video games is just getting so much bigger again like, oh, it's it's, like it was back in the day then it's like it took a break for a while and now with esports stuff it's getting so big it's if huge. it is it'd be really cool and i imagine their thought is it's a way to get kids involved in who are already involved in gaming to maybe think tournament dabble or, yeah. well dabble into f- a fishing game you know he's playing gets playing fortnite Maybe I don't know. Maybe you can convince him to pl- play a fishing game. Do you remember NBA Jam? What if they have big head mode? Oh, just what? What if it's no, big? You head? make a cast and their line catches on fire. Yeah, and you throw all fire. the way to go. What if it's down. only uh, big head mode is only for uh, uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. owners of MLO? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh God. 
<laughs> you can name so many names right now. Yeah, yeah. What, what is it? Gerald says egos, assholes, and whatever. That's going to be what his book's going to be called. Yeah. Oh my God. Love you, miss you, everybody. Wow. Everybody that I just insulted. <laughs> wow. Big head mode, but big head mode was a big thing. NBA Jam, thing. man. Mookie or uh, not Mookie Betts. Uh, God, a little dude from Atlanta Hawks. Um, Spud Webb. Spud Webb. Spud Webb. Yeah. Spud's head look huge. And big head mode. <laughs> We're really just. This is just kind of a. Kind of rambling. So, so you think the fishing video game is a good thing? I do too. And dude, they must have pumped some money into that old they bass master because they said, "Brought to you by Dovetail," like four Dovetail thousand yeah. times this week. Um, Scott Martin, spokesperson for it, just out there, and and he's got that audience. You know, he's got that kind of Guggen squad, younger. I yeah. feel like you know, uh, he's the right person to push it. Yeah, I, for I sure. think it's. I think what that I have not played that game, but I did. I don't remember the name of the game that I played in the past, but it was. Like I said, I mean it has Gunnersville on the Mario. Yeah, yeah, Mario. It was it was on the Gunnersville was on the thing, so like I wanted to always fish Gunnersville, but it looks nothing like the real lake. I've never played before Gunnersville, yeah. I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was on Xbox, but it was on Sega Dreamcast. No. <laughs> but like I think now they have the actual lakes. Like it's a it looks real. It looks a lot more real. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be cool. Hopefully my kids will get it so I can, you know, play it and they'll quit playing when they're at school. Minecraft, Fortnite. I just like Mike Tyson's punch out. I know you do. Mario, I do like it. I, we've had a lot of conversations about Mike Tyson's punch out uh, for sure. D Money, I'm going to ask you a favor. I'm going to ask you to restart that camera okay. before I call this guest. Perfect. Hey, while he's resetting the camera, I want to say, y'all, sweet tea, offering a low budget discount. If y'all want to order some of this, I think the code is LBL10. Is that correct? It's just LBL. It's just LBL. Use code LBL if you want a discount. On the y'all sweet tea. He's got some cool decals and shirts and all kind of stuff. So um, get on there. Get on there. All righty. We're reset. So got heavy hitters going on right now. Um, the Elite Series just wrapped when we're recording this. We've been texting back and forth with our buddy Jason Christie. Not going to have him on this afternoon because, you know, Maybe he's got a couple things going on. There's 10,000 people at that way in, but uh, going to try to get him on maybe next week to talk about that express and all that good stuff. Actually, hang on a second. I think we got a missed call here. Oh, uh, it was actually Clay Connor from Express calling while we we're recording. Clay, I love you, but uh, I'm sure he, he is very excited right now. Uh, but our guest today is one of uh, a guy that I think will obviously go down in history as probably one of the top five greatest tournament anglers of all time. Where you yeah. put it? Where you got him? Yeah. Where you got him? Yeah, definitely. You said, you said yeah. Yeah, definitely in top five. He he's 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 something else, man. He uh, absolutely just pummeled him on FLW forever. Forest Wick Cup champ. Chose not to go Elite Series and chose to go BPT, and he's been making it work for him. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try to get him on the phone right now. He was leading his round. His his when you're listening to this, he'll be on the water, so you can watch him, so you can listen to what he's going to tell you. How it's going down, and you can see if he was lying to us on the podcast. But my little buddy, smoke on the water, Brian Thrift. See if we can get him right now. That's slick how you do that. You like that? I like Brian Thrift, what's up, buddy? Hey, I'm eating supper. You're I'm eating supper? Wolf. Yeah, I was trying to wolf it down before you called me. That gummit. Well, we're, hey, I'm recording. I like, I like you with food in your mouth. All the low lifers will, too. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, first of all, I need to know what are you eating and who are you eating with right now? I'm eating delicious spaghetti with my buddy Randy Groves and Luke Claus. Oh, man. That's a, that sounds like a rough crowd. I don't know Randy, but Luke, <laughs> Luke alone is, is, uh, is trouble. Did Luke cook, or did you cook, or did Randy cook? Actually, it was a treat. Randy's mother made uh, it. Oh, okay. Uh, that sounds like the move. That's, oh, yeah. It's probably better than any of y'all doing that, I would think. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my goodness, dude. Well, I, I am here. I got my buddy. Uh, you know Darian. You know stupid Darian is fishing. We are actually at his uh, Y'all Sweet Tea Warehouse recording this podcast and uh so he he had some questions for you too so if you hear another voice that sounds a lot better than mine it's gonna be d money <laughs> chiming in buddy 
since we're interrupting your supper and all, we're, Darian, Darian launched a brand, y'all sweet tea, this week. He, he, sweet tea. Well, buddy, we'll, send you well, some. well, guess what? You go get some. I guarantee it. He's got, uh, it's it's some of the best sweet tea you've ever had. You got to make it. He's going to, it's going to send you tea bags, but uh, they used to do it at uh, all these festivals and different things, actually make the tea and sell it by the jar. They sent it to you in a, in a mason jar, and uh, now he's going to mail it to you really cool thing but he launched it saturday so we're down here celebrating a little bit and uh recording the dang low budget live it ain't it ain't like let's talk fish studio <laughs> no. he was not ready for me you know i'm i'm used to a lot nicer stuff than this but <laughs> here we are make you a glass of sweet tea for the show he did, I did. i'm drinking it when you go okay. back and see this i'm shaking it at the camera right yep. now yeah he did make me a sweet tea he did provide sweet tea in a mason jar so uh well dude I mean, no surprise, you're at the top of uh, the leaderboard <laughs> again. But I got to ask you, man, like, what is it like in an MLF event? Everybody talks about format this, format that. But, dude, when they're catching them like that, like, these lakes are freak shows. I feel like I said today it's like Oprah giving away six-pounders. Everybody gets a six-pounder. <laughs> That's what yeah. it seems like at this place. Like, every you look, you look next to it, everybody's biggest pass, I feel like, is at least over five, but most of them are sixes, truly, at every lake that they've been to. But, dude, what is it like when you – I don't remember what your total number of fish was yesterday, but, I mean, dude, it's like um, – I don't need How many did you have? Over, 12 or 13. Tw- or something so, like that. 40-something pounds, though. I mean – in one yeah. day, that's a three-day tournament total. In a lot of, you know what I'm saying, like in a lot of yeah. a lot of big events. So what's that like? Like trying to keep up, like pressure cooker wise, in that situation. Does it get to you? Or you, I mean, do you change the no, way you it, fish when it's a big fish lake? No, I don't change the way I fish at all. I mean, I've always fished, you know, for as many bites as I can. That's I right. Play the numbers game. You know, if I can catch fifty or sixty. Fish. If I get 50 or 60 bites in a day, odds are five of them is going to be bigger. That's just kind of the way I've always fished. But, you know, this format here for heavy hitters is unique because we're changing lakes and you don't have to save anything. Okay. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about, well, the next round is going to be on the same lake. I need to leave these alone go try to find four. So tomorrow you're somewhere different oh. then? Do I know tomorrow I'm on the same lake? I, I got you. Scary. Oh. Okay, I got you. Okay. But, like, you you don't have to, you know, save for a later day. If they're bite, you can just catch them. Just yank on them. And then, so, you go from that. If you win your round, uh, this is going to be, when you guys are listening to this, obviously it's Monday. Brian's out there fishing. We're recording this on Sunday, just so there's no confusion and you're not looking for Brian <laughs> on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, but if you win your round, you automatically go to the top ten, correct? Are they still yeah, doing it that way? Well, okay. you, you can opt to fish the elimination round if you want to to still have a chance to catch a fifty thousand dollar oh that's They're, cool they give you that option like if oh. you want to risk not making the top 10 and have a chance to fish for that fifty thousand oh. dollar fish you can oh so but if you win your round you're not automatically in the top 10 and get to do that you got to pick kind yeah, of deal pick. Oh, <laughs> that's cool what are you what are you gonna do i'm gonna put you on the spot if you win your round oh, I think you don't put me on the spot i'm going to the championship <laughs> <laughs> because big that's bass there yeah the, yeah the big bass in the championship rounds 100 grand. that's right in first place is 100 grand I, i'm yeah, going i'm so. taking my chances on that 200 <laughs> grand yeah, like yeah, joe lee right. did last year <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah i'm taking my ch- where will the championship round be which one of those three lakes so the elimination round and the championship round will be on Sharon Harris. Now, wh- which is the best of the three lakes? I have no idea because this is the first time I've ever fished any of them. Really? And yes, you're sir. a North Carolina boy. Yeah, but I'm I'm about three and a half hours. I got gotcha. These lakes, and if I'm going to drive that far, I usually go on down to Santee. Yeah, or Murray or wherever. Yeah. Uh, no, not even Murray. Santee. Santee. You're going to Santee. <laughs> I'm going to Santee. Well, that's what people are like, man, you're a Tennessee boy. You fish Douglas a bunch. Got a bunch of buddies over at the open. I'm like, that's four hours from my house. I live 45 minutes from Pickwick. No, I don't, <laughs> yeah. go, I don't go to Douglas. I'm an hour and a half from Gunnersville and 45 minutes from Pickwick. I don't go to Douglas <laughs> or Old Hickory in Nashville or Percy Priest. I go to the freaking Tennessee River. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Dang, man. Well, that's uh, that's crazy. I, I just uh, – I, this tournament for me, for MLF last year, I thought was the coolest one they had all year, truly. I thought it was just the way it shook out with Jordan winning the 200 grand, 
the fight for you know Michael Neal winning big bass by an ounce in the last few minutes. That I can think it was yeah. the third day. Just a really cool deal. But this year they they're just blasting them, man. I, I don't. I think Fletcher Shrock caught a nine pounder today, and I saw maybe another eight. Uh, yeah. Ton of sevens. It's just it's just insane, man. But uh, dude, so talk about because this will this will come out while you're fishing. So. Talk a little bit about your strategy, I guess, I, if you can. Like, what do you? I didn't get to watch most. Of it. I was fishing a tournament, so I didn't get to, didn't get to watch a lot. But how? Like, what are you doing there to, to catch your fish? Um, yesterday, I caught um, all my fish on a frog except for two. <laughs> I caught uh, two on a five-inch Dubuque stinger, and all the rest of them just came on a pro frog. Okay. So that, that's kind of. But the only thing is, it looks good. But I caught them all out of one little area. No, oh, <laughs> really. The only place I could get a ball. Like I caught them there that morning, left, fished a bunch of other stuff, never got a bite, and went back in the afternoon and caught some more. Were they, so are they spawning, spawning or what's the what's the deal? Are they moving yeah, up? I mean, they're in there trying to. I mean, coming in to spawn or actively spawn. Okay. Unbelievable, man. I just. Uh, I, I don't know, man. You just I, the the whole the format thing blows my mind because I I don't I want to catch. I know you like to catch as many as you can, but I do my best to just you know figure out how to catch five. <laughs> they keep so having to catch like forty to keep up with you and that deal. I don't I don't know that I can. I, I know I'll go inside. I know. I know I can't ever do that. Darian looked at me, uh, Brian off off uh, to my right here, and he when you said yeah, I try to get fifty or sixty, 50, bites, 60 bites. Hell, I've Darian. never got fifty sixty bites in a whole weekend and Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Darian ain't That's got fifty like bites like live, baby. Most of the time it doesn't happen. Uh, sometimes it does. I don't know. I watch it. I don't know. I, I keep up with this pretty good, and I fished against you, and I'd like to say it happens for you more than it does most people. <laughs> Gagley already told me one time that you get more bites. He said, Brian Thrills get, gets more bites than anybody I've ever been around, truly. Like he said, he did that. He said, there, y'all were at Kentucky Lake one time, and he told a story that you pulled up on some ledge that he had some found on, and you're like, man, he said, I can't get him to bite. He said, you're like, well, there's one. There's one. There's one. He's like, he just gets more bites than anybody. That's why he kicks her teeth in all the time. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Dude, so I've got a uh, – for all the, the fans of the show uh, out there that are tackle nuts, i, I got to ask about this big blade chatterbait. Ooh. Yeah, I got it. I get, well, here's the thing. When there's a camera rolling and there's microphones on, I figure I can put you on the spot. Oh, yeah, I do. I a little do bit? Because I've seen pictures of it. I've seen you talk about it. What's the deal with that, and when can people, like, get that bait? Okay, they're going to release it at ICAST this year. So it will. It should start going out to retailers in, you know, the July, mid-July time frame is when they're going to kind of release it to the public. Okay. But it, it is a, it's an awesome bait. I mean, it's... I've been throwing it for probably the better part of three years. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've caught a lot of fish on it and had a lot of great finishes on it. Like, just almost one grand on it two years ago. I mean, I just, I've caught them really good on it when they bite, you know, big spinner baits and stuff like that. So it's just slow. You can just fish it slow. Oh, yeah. You can crawl it and it thumps so hard. Like, it's just. It's it's just another tool in the chatterbait lineup, but it's yeah. a great bait. That we we kind of the ones that I was throwing were actually all the components were Z-Man components. They they used to make a musky chatterbait way back when chatterbait first came oh. in, the, in the mid two thousands, and I had some of the blades, and I just I had some old chatterbait heads, and I kind of made them myself. You know, kind of put them together myself and kind of had it to myself and I'm talking to Daniel and Joey and Z-Man and uh, I told him I was like man I'd like to make this big blade chatterbait and they were kind of on the edge of the fence with it and all that and uh, I was telling them you know how good I caught them on it and stuff and I finally uh, last year when we were in Ufall I smoked them on it the first day on live at Ufall. Now I remember that yeah. <laughs> and they had, like, Daniel called me and he's like man we had like 40 retailers call us trying to buy them today. 
He said, we're going to get this thing going. I said, thank you. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, dude, let me ask you this, though, all right? Because I know I know you. It's no joke. You you, you sneaky. You sneaky, Brian Thrift, on, <laughs> on your baits. And, dude, you are. You just – and, like, you're dialed in on – you are a tinkerer, and you're, but you're – we've talked about this on Low Budget before – but you're a you're a tackle at it for sure. Like you oh. carry, you fill up your live wheels with tackle. Now it's your fishing BPT. You told me that last year. Like that's crazy. I've got two boxes, two like Tupperware, not Tupperware, but like storage, like those clear plastic storage boxes that fit perfectly in my Ranger live well. I, 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 <laughs> I turn the live well on research so it don't fill up with water, and I fill the live well full of tackle. Um, I mean, like that. That's just. I mean, that, that's insane. But. Why? And I asked Todd Castledine the same thing on a little sneaky bait. He had Strike King make one time. Yeah. But why do you want the public to have it? Why? I, when I, you're kicking Jacob Wheeler's butt with it, why do you need him to have it? <laughs> <laughs> because um, it's an opportunity for me to. I mean, obviously, I'm sponsored by Z. Yeah, yeah. Chatterbait. And, and you're actually going to give me a signature series. Okay. Blade, so. Okay, very cool. That's then. And plus, I mean, anytime you get to design the bait yourself, oh, well, actually yeah. actually bring it to market, I mean, a, that's just a fun process. And an honor, get, right? Like, a, right, that's what right. we grow up dreaming about. Yeah. Right. I mean, we got everything perfect on it. It's going to have a big six alt mustad hook. Got the head design, and I got to pick all the skirt colors. Like, the skirt colors, I, I tied them myself and sent them to them. And that's, that's the cool. skirt colors we're going to have. Dang it. That's, that's the cool. deal right there. What what sizes will it be in head wise? It's gonna come in a half, a five eighths, and a three quarters, and I think there's gonna be ten colors. Dang! And it's it's gonna be cool because we did some stuff that Chatterbait hasn't ever done before. You know they've got the red Chatterbaits with the black blades and all, mm -hmm. but we actually did a we did a fire crawl that's gonna have an orange blade. <laughs> we did a coleslaw color that's gonna have an orange blade. Oh, oh those won't those won't those sell. Won't sell. <laughs> those won't sell. <laughs> hey, hey, remember that sweet tea we were talking about? <laughs> We'll trade. We'll trade. We'll yeah. Trade. yeah, Darian wanted to send you some tea. <laughs> yeah, Darian's going to send you tea right now. For, for, some, for some undisclosed chatter baits. Hey, do you like six cents baits? I'll send you some six cents stuff. I'll trade you some six cents for some chatter baits. Golly. It works up, man. Yeah, dude. That's awesome, yeah, it, man. It's going to be cool. And we, we, you know, we mixed in, you know, all the standbys. We got the black and blue and your green pumpkin colors, but it's not, it's not just straight green pumpkin and black and blue. It's my custom tweaks to the the colors that I like to throw. Okay. In, you know, just a little different than what everybody's black and blue and green yeah. pumpkin looks like. Like like my green pumpkin color, I mixed in a little smoke blue flake in it. Yeah. I mean it's there it's gonna look good. They're awesome. Of course it's smoke blue, buddy. Of course it is. <laughs> I smoke on the water. I like it. Dude, that's uh, that's freaking cool, man. I, I'm proud for you on that. I just no I had to ask. I saw it in, in a photo gallery maybe from Rayburn I think. Yeah. Uh, no, or was it? No, it was Cumberland uh, or uh, Del Hollow. Del Hollow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. First day at Del Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I saw that and I was like, that, that gum, that sucker is up there winding that thing around. I think I remember that musky chatterbait right when that first broke loose, whenever you uh, brought the chatterbait to the mainstream down there at Okeechobee. Yeah, they, they made a big musky ch chatterbait, but it was, it was too, the bait itself was too big for the bass market. Like, it had a giant, like, 10 all heavy, heavy wire hook. Like, you could never throw it on conventional bass gear. Huh. And I just took the blades off and put them on, you know, five-eighths heads and half-ounce heads and three-quarter heads. I've been fishing it for the last couple of years. Hey, well... Dude, that's uh, I can't wait. I'll just uh, I'll text you my address as soon as it's over with. Darian, I'll send you his, and we'll just get it get the deal worked out there. I, I, hey, Brian Thrift, I know you got your own podcast, Let's Talk Fish, but you can sponsor LBL. It's fine. I can say, Low Budget Live brought to you by Brian Thrift and his chatterbaits right here. I'll do it every week. I'll look right at this camera and say that, buddy, gladly. Uh, I had a question. Okay, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, buddy. So I had some questions come in. The last time, uh, or right after the last time I had you on, I, I believe it was, but about your decision to not, because you're not fishing the pro circuit this year, correct? No, I'm not. Okay. What, what's, what's the thought process behind that? Because you are fishing some Toyotas. Is it just too much with the BPT or kind of what, you know, what? just what's the deal with that? People are just um, wanting to know. Deal, yeah, the biggest deal was just the time. 
like I was pretty much going to be gone from mid-February to about June if I, I did that. Like, maybe be home like a day or two here and there. And I don't, like, I like to fish 12 to 14 events a year, but I like to have some, you know, some summer events, fall events where it's not all packed up. Anymore. Yeah. And, and it's not because, well, the biggest reason is obviously I don't want to be away from my family. Of course. I didn't see them, but, but also I'm so one-track minded. I can't focus on the next lake until I'm done with the one I'm on now. Yeah. So I end up scrambling, and it just, it had never fared well for me. <laughs> you end up finishing 11th yeah. instead of first. <laughs> <laughs> Drop out of the top 10 every time. That it. When I have to fish these back to backs, I always just finish first and 12th. That gum yeah. Brian through. <laughs> no, I, I do. I wish. I do. Like, I'm hoping maybe they'll kind of expand the schedule on the, the uh, Pro Tour. Maybe if they'll push a little bit of those, a few of those tournaments into the fall or summer. Yeah, I definitely think both. Of them. Dude, I, I'd love to see more fall tournaments and pro fishing. I know a lot of guys like to deer hunt and whatever, and they don't like it because of that. But, but man, I just we miss so much, especially like for the tackle industry. I feel like right. there's so many opportunities to show fans yeah, there's, there's other like techniques. Five, mo- five months with pretty much nothing. That's out. right. That's right, man. I you other, know like top level stuff. I mean, right. The Toyota series, of course. Like that, but you don't have any top level. Thing. Yeah, and, and most like t- most of your big team series and stuff, their championships are always in the fall. They fish into the fall. BFLs fish into the fall. Yeah. But uh, I've just man, I've always loved fall tournaments. We were talking about actually before we got you on, like the elites fished in the fall. Darian said he didn't like it as much just because the tournaments were so tough. But I, man, I, I like that. Like I, I yeah, like watching I, that go down. I like that too, and it's it's like you said. I mean, it's a different set of skills. It's a different bait. You know, different techniques, different patterns, and. You know, it's just something that will really help everybody get a better understanding of bass fishing. Uh, yeah. It seems like now all the information out there is focused on pre-spawn to, <laughs> you know, summertime fishing. That's, That's right. pretty much all you got. Yeah, we see we see Cinco's, Domeki Stingers, and then 6 x <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Chatterbaits, yeah. Dude, so I, I got one more thing for you, and I'm going to let you go back to uh, eating spaghetti with Luke. Uh, and I appreciate you doing this, man. I, I, oh, yeah. it, I hadn't talked to you near enough lately, actually. But uh, and I was thinking yesterday, I was like, I got I to text Thrifty, uh, get him to come on. But going back to Chatterbait, so you blew that thing up. And, you know, it's like when the A-Rig first came out. Everybody jumps on the wave. Right. Things get crazy. Then it seems like the fish did get conditioned to it a little bit. I don't think we ever saw that with chatterbaits, though. Do you do you think they ever got conditioned? Because I feel like I catch just as many on it now as I did when it first blew up. Exactly, and it's that's just a bait that it fills a niche category. I mean, unlike the A rig, like the chatterbait, you can still. I mean, people still fish it just like any other bait. Yeah, that's right. But Year the round. A rig, people were kind of targeting fish that normally didn't get targeted that's right and that's why it was so good when it first came out but once those fish got used to it they kind of changed their habits but you know there's always going to be fish in shallow water and on a ledge that you can catch on a chatter no no doubt about it but i just you know it, you, you do see them get conditioned but hell we're still catching them on spinner baits we watched jason christie win 100 grand on a spinner bait today right, exactly. uh, yet again <laughs> and it's been it's been going since before Jimmy Houston started throwing it in tournaments back way back when. But, yeah, I just I wanted to ask you that. Like, do you think there's any difference in it, you know, now versus when it came out? And, of course, chatterbaits have advanced, right? We've got the jackhammer now, and you got the stealth plate, and you got all these different things. Uh, but I just wanted to know, if you, had you ever seen a situation where you thought maybe they were a little more conditioned to it or anything? I, because I haven't seen that. No, I, I have not run into that situation. Now, I've seen run into situations where, like that big blade they'll bite it better than a regular chatterbait huh. just because it is a little different vibration it thumps a little harder but no i've not seen a situation where they were you know shied off of a chatterbait at all interesting man i, I like that that's good stuff good stuff for you low lifers there from the man the myth the legend brian <laughs> thrift uh brian tell them when they can watch let's talk fish live with our little buddy matt airy well, if we can ever both get back to the show. <laughs> We've been gone for, it seems like, a month or two. But uh, whenever we're both back home on a Tuesday. 
So it's normally Tuesdays. I got you. All right. Yeah, Tuesdays so, at 7 p.m. Eastern. Let's talk fish live on Facebook. And we have fun with <laughs> oh, there's no doubt about that. I, y'all, uh, y'all be on the lookout for that. I know y'all post on your social when you're going to get together and do one. Yeah. But uh, you need to get you a dang camera. Y'all need to zoom each other from the road and do let's talk fish when you're uh, when he's in an elite and you're at a BPT. Yeah, we've we've tried to do that and we do it some, but it's we're more focused on fishing. I get that. That way, we, that way we got a good story to tell. When we Absolutely. <laughs> well, and if I had that kick-ass studio that y'all have i'd just wait till i got back to it too to be honest yeah jeff's done a great job yeah man it looks good <laughs> y'all 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 are killing it man but uh well dude i appreciate it you can go catch them up and hopefully we'll see you in that top 10 round trying to win you 200 grand i hope so i'm hoping i can catch a couple out of my little place tomorrow <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of worried about it as good as they caught them like you said today we can't watch the live but i can look at the score tracker and it looked like they blistered them pretty Yeah, it was going days, off like so. a slot machine. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> a yeah, slot so machine that, full of six pounders. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's kind of worrying me. I think I've got like a 30-pound lead over the 11th place guy. But, you know, they might like they did at Jordan on Falls tomorrow. That's probably not going to be enough. Yeah, man, that 30-pound lead, is, you're, 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 you're in some shit. I'll just say that. You know, I'll go watch one of my videos yeah, and, and yeah. learn how. To... Listen, subscribe to Darian is fishing tonight. I'll, Look, I'll... if you want to see how to overcome adversity, yeah. just watch me beat him and our show up, show it up, turn him. Jeez, he'll, he'll teach you. He'll teach you what that's like. Well, what we're gonna have to do? We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get together and have a. LBL versus LTF challenge. Okay, well, let's do that, but let's make it where it's just me and you against Matt. <laughs> okay, we'll get Matt in the boat with Fat Cat or something, and then uh, me and you for Team LBL. We'll just, I, I can just borrow you because I'm never going to fish a 1v1 against you and Matt. Or, it, yeah. <laughs> for the sake of my show. We have to ban, we have to, in the rules, there has to be no Demiki Stingers in that tournament. No Demiki Stingers? No. Here's the number one rule in that tournament. You can't use a rod and reel. <laughs> I just, right here, you already, get a beer can you're, right. you, you get a beer can and I'll give you a chatterbait. That's out of my box with a rusty hook. That's yeah. all you're getting. <laughs> That's all you get, Thrifty. That's it, buddy. <laughs> but hey, that is a good idea. That is a good idea. I'll bring Darian and I'll trade Darian to, to Matt for you and my boat. And then we'll, we'll all go fish against each other uh, on a neutral, a neutral ground. We'll meet at Clark's Hill or something. <laughs> oh God! I Neither have I. That's why right. we'll go there. Let's go there. Oh my gosh! We now we ain't doing no Norman or freaking that other place. No, Y'all no. win all them tournaments. Moss Lake. We ain't going to Moss Lake for that one. <laughs> Unless you're in my boat. Oh me. Well, buddy, go win. You uh, you can win twenty five grand for big bass tomorrow, and you can win another hundred. Yeah, you, know, you know, no big deal. Just some money on the line. Yeah, just a lot of money. <laughs> just a lot of money. You can go, you can go build you another huge shop, and uh, ain't no telling what you can do with the, if you win this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to win it, but you never know. I've, and, I've never been to Sharon Harris, so okay. I don't know what it's did, did you like. practice it at all? I did not. I okay. Three days on falls. Nice. I wanted to make, try to give myself the best chance to actually make the elimination round. And, <laughs> so if you make the top ten, can you go right around there? No. Okay. No. Okay. So I got you. If you win uh, your round, I mean, so you can't go right around yeah, or anything. You're I just going blind. blind. Yeah, I'm just rigging tackle the next day and going blind in the championship round. Well, I'd rather go blind as Brian Thrift than Luke Duncan any day. <laughs> I'll just tell you that much. <laughs> I don't know. I don't do you going blind. <laughs> well, dude, I know you'll figure it out, and uh, can't wait to to see it all go down, man. I appreciate you letting us interrupt spaghetti time. Oh, yeah, anytime. All right, buddy. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. See, see you, buddy. Brian Thrift right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dude, they just – there's nobody better, man. Yeah, well, it's, it is going to be a grind out there. Typically, 50 or 60 bites. Typically, these April tournaments really get me. and I just catch 75 pounds instead of 60. <laughs> he, <laughs> he is so – and that's him. All the time, I like to point that out. Like I know Brian, outside of lights, camera, act like that's just Brian. Brian is a very humble dude, and he don't have to be. He could be like, "Yeah, I'm pretty much the best it's ever been." Uh, y'all can all just go to hell. Peace out. 
But he ain't that guy. Like he's, he, and I think he likes teaching people. He's sneaky though. I will say that. We'll say that right there in the camera. Brian Thrift is sneaky when it comes to his base. So I am surprised. I think he. I think he uses decoy rods on his front deck. Like all those rods. I think some of them are. I think he's that OCD, and it's like a security blanket for him. I know. Oh, you th- you I, I, you think I think he's, he's, he's got about he's got about fourteen rods out. I think he's really hitting on about five of them. Oh yeah, probably. But news the same way. Like they got it's like got to have it out even if they're not going to throw it, you know. And that's my favorite thing because people see a guy with that many rods and they're like, huh, look at that guy, boy, he's dialed in. <laughs> Meanwhile, however many million later he's won. D yeah, money, do me 50 a favor. Fifty or sixty bytes later. Do me a favor. Reset a camera one more time. We'll okay. D money having to play producer here at y'all sweet tea. Thank y'all for listening. To that I, there was one thing I forgot to freaking ask him. D money, we'll get back to it when you get back over here from the other side of this camera. Low budget. Uh, the thing I forgot to ask him about, and I heard some more on this this week. There are a lot of MLF guys, and I don't think Brian would be one of them because he's just normally kind of guys kind of content where he was at. But I did hear that there are just a lot of dudes that are just kind of aggravated with some of the rules. You can't talk to people. You can't, um, like you and I are rooming together, you can't talk fishing at all. Well, that's part of the fun of fishing, even though it is a business and it's not always fun. I get that at the pro level, but you're not allowed to say, hey, man, swim jig, or whatever to the guy you're rooming with. Like how people probably had to leave spaghetti night to get away to talk to us. I'm sure. I'm sure. Talk about how, well, yeah, well, you heard him. Like, you heard him get away. Yeah. So, and that's a rule I think that's frustrating a lot of guys. There's some other things frustrating people. I, I think this week they had to fish out of MLF boats and jerseys, and I don't think that was something that was originally told to them till maybe a couple weeks ago for heavy hitters. But it's a no-entry fee event that they're giving away a freaking pile of cash. So, I'd show up and fish on a G-string yeah. for a chance to win, you know, 200 grand on the I saw that, so. and I've, I've, I like it. I saw that and I read their Instagram like because they had a bunch of heat. Oh, because a bunch of I, 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 but like it's, personally, it's confusing. we've it's had confusing. we've had we've been busy this week, so I haven't really paid attention to a lot of fishing stuff this week, which is unusual for me. So when I see Instagram at night and I saw those boats, I truly had no clue that that was even a thing. So I start reading the comments. People were mad and like obviously had no clue. And so Major League Fishing is defending like here's why we were doing it. Explanation of oh, why. Oh really? I hadn't looked at. And dude, oh, yeah, it's like it trying to read what they're saying. And I'm not even being a hater in in any form or fashion. Just like, dude, you can't decipher the message that it's they were confusing. responding yeah, back to these confusing. people. Like, and I genuinely just trying to figure out why. Uh, you know, I, I saw it from Wheeler had some fans today, and I just like I said, just see it on Instagram. People were like. Are you not with Academy anymore? Because it is confusing, yeah. right, for people that don't know. But their, their cup events that they fish, which are the TV shows, they do fish out of yeah. those boats, and they're used to fishing out of them. But I think I, I don't I don't know the entire, like, when they were told. I heard it was a couple weeks ago. But then I heard some guys didn't pay attention to when they were told and showed up over there this week and were kind of like, uh, what? Confused about it. Uh, I don't know. I, I think confusion is the best way to put some of that stuff sometimes for the fans and like you're saying i didn't look at their social media uh comments because lord knows i did an entire basically hour podcast about social media comments last week and uh and how people can be so uh because god there were people that jumped on them about that april fools thing you and i talked about they got it. me on they that. got me for about, the best april they, fools they, they got me seen. for about three minutes and then i was like oh you yeah yeah okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm with it but it, but it was great but, uh, dude, people were like, I hate you. I hope you never come here again with your shenanigans or whatever. There was there was a lot uh, going on about that. You, you actually put a poll out there. Is this April Fool's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on the IG? On the IG. All right. Tell everybody, as we wind down here, um, where can they get them some a y'all sweet tea. Y'all won't believe this place either. Like this is Willy Wonka's Tea Factory. Yeah, we, indeed. It's very cool. It's a very cool spot. Yeah, that's cool. We um yeah. So we ju- like yesterday we just launched, and so we were working through. It was fun. Like we we know we've developed a really good tea. Like I'm the, the tea really the tea is really good. good. The really packaging. Good tea. I I feel comfortable with the packaging. But one thing that I truly don't know a lot about is shipping. And that's the one thing that's worn me out. And I, I built a website. I was proud of that. And I just, like, step by step, watching a YouTube video, then I go change the color to blue. Then it's like, all right, I change it back to white. So I did a bunch of, like, trial and error type things. But the shipping thing is just, it was scary to me because I don't have any, I don't have any, um, 
background with that. So that has been fun to learn this weekend. We've got to figure it figured out. It wasn't that big of a deal, but so you want to have your own small business. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah must be nice. Must, well, be, must nice. be nice. Like there's just, there's just so many things. And, and for the people that have already bought, I know there's already people on this podcast, for especially sure. if y'all use uh, Luke's discount code, LBL save you 10%. Um, but tagging us on photo like tagging us like we we super we really appreciate all that stuff and so it's really cool just to see all the love that we've got from the fishing community because this is not a it's not us coming out with a new rod or anything cool like um so it's cool it's been really cool and we really appreciate seeing the support from that and as the future uh national sales manager for y'all sweet tea uh i have a i have a guarantee from darian that i We'll have a big money job here. Big money. Big money Huge for the rest money. of my life, basically. Now yeah. that he sold about $3 million worth of the tea this weekend, it's really uh, really putting him on the spot here with that. But uh, So what do you think overall about the launch? So, yeah, it was really I, good. So, I, I, like you, I fished a tournament yesterday, didn't have phone service, and I and I keep up with everything you got going on just like you do me. We're like family. Yeah. And I didn't talk to you. So you've been super swamped yeah. this week. But what would you think overall? It was awesome. So we, um, you know, we one of the coolest things that we're doing is working with some really really big influencers that are not in the fishing space so me and you know obviously we luke fished as a pro i've never fished as a pro so i've just been like a tournament angler then turned youtuber so kind of an influencer type situation so i know i'm very familiar with fishing influencer contracts how that work how much they can sell so seeing these girls these instagram girls or thirst traps there's no no none no, of these are thirst these traps. Were, i did not no. get, i did not want to do any thirst traps so Dude, like just like a, how I, how cool. I personally like a thirst trap. I'm just yeah. gonna say that. I mean, just kidding, I've, I've looked at a thirst trap every now. And Have you ever swiped? No, I've never swiped. Okay. <laughs> I'm not clicking on uh, on uh, OnlyFans, but it's been really cool. Like these girls are super professional. They're really really good at what they do, and it's been cool to see how you can convert influencers into your product and then running Facebook ads and tying the whole package together. It's been really cool to play with and. Um, yeah, it's super exciting. I e- I think I equally love like I love catching fish. I love fishing, obviously, but to me, this experience has been super cool to see like sourcing like starting with the product. So we sourced this. We we made it exactly perfect. Create the logo. Come up with the branding. Hiring different artists to do all like putting that whole package together to see this weekend to see it be successful. Just super awesome. I'm I am addicted to that as much as I am addicted to fishing. Like this this week, it was the craziest week I've ever had. Staying up late, waking up crazy early, chasing things around, and just love it. Like and now the work just started though, right? Now the like work just the, started. Yeah, like the, it, has, it hasn't thing. even started because we haven't started packing orders yet. When will that start? Monday. So let, let's just. I'm, <laughs> I, I know this is like this is a huge part of what happened. So you you try to time all this stuff out. God, I could talk forever on this because I learned so many lessons this last two weeks, like last three weeks. But um, on Friday, the boxes and the packaging, everything was get here, and it ended up not getting here on time. So we launch on Saturday. I get told on Friday that we don't have any packaging at all. And so we got all these orders, and we have no way to ship them, which l- luckily it was over the weekend, and nothing can ship till Monday anyhow. So nothing's really going to be late. But as far as stress level, it, it, you don't cap- it capped that. at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no cap, it capped. No cap. It, it definitely capped. But it, it was just, it was really cool. The whole thing was really cool. Um, and you just learn little things. Like, th- th- there's one I am going to get into a little bit of a story time. Um, one lesson I learned, most of y'all uh, are, are adults and know this adult stuff, but I'm, I'm growing into being an adult. <laughs> and so I'm learning some of these life things. He does, he has some hair on his chin today. It's just overnight. Yeah, it overnight. Um, so one, the biggest lesson that I've learned in the last three weeks was something that's so simple, but I, I didn't realize the importance of it. And I've done it a bunch of times. I just didn't realize the importance of it when I didn't do it, which is setting a deadline and making sure your vendors know when there's a deadline. Or And this I think this can apply to other things like, hey, dinner's going to be ready tonight. Well, and what Like you didn't say what, like I think you can apply to other things, but specifically in my situation, I was talking with a vendor. Hey, we need these by launch date. Well, how long does it take to make a? How long does it take to make these bags? Well, we our production time on them is three to five weeks. Well, I'm like, well, we've got eight weeks, so there's plenty. There, I don't have to worry about anything. As that gets closer and closer and closer, in my mind, it only takes three to five weeks. That's plenty of time. But as we get into that three to five, they never. It, it wasn't as big of a priority then because I didn't set a deadline. It's something that's so simple as just setting a deadline. In the second that I told them there was like they wouldn't respond to me an email for a couple of days, a week. The second that I set that deadline, hey guys, we must have this by this date. 
like the whole thing changed. Every single vendor, all of them did the exact same thing. We got product immediately, responses immediately, phone calls. But it was just seeing that in the moment. That's one thing that's cool about learning a small business, and a lot of you, I'm sure, own small businesses too, is learning little things like that and then applying them again over and over and over because I'm never going to forget to relay a deadline. Off on a little bit of not anything to do with fishing topic, but that was something cool that I learned in the last two weeks. That's awesome. I mean, Darian and I talk every day. Basically every morning. Yeah. Start our day. Yeah, that's our that's our day. That's Sorry. our daily start. Just to kind of and, and dude, it is this like bouncing ideas off of each other, talking about life. Lord knows there's enough of that to talk about all the time. But it's like he pushes me, I push him, and y'all all have friends like that. So it's cool for me to get to see it come together. But I this guy is cooler than the other side of the pillow nine out of ten days. But I saw it this week where you were stressed and you're yeah. like trying to figure out. So I know that you'll be uh You'll, you're damn sure be sending some deadlines to some folks. Yeah, it's just crazy. Like, but so it's it's cool to me to think back of like, I don't know. There's the the learning the like when you start really learning and paying attention to everything, whatever it is, fishing. Like, I'm obviously haven't paid enough attention to fishing, but whatever you can apply yourself to and learn that much and like really really pay attention and then reapply those things and you start seeing those little things work. That's the coolest thing to me. Like, yeah. yeah. For sure, dude. I got I got too deep into that, but you, it was a big it was a big it was a big lesson this week. I like there I learned a lot of people that listen to low budget that are obviously big D money fans. Darian is fishing and like to see you succeed, and you and Hannah are doing this together with Brandon and Carrie. It's freaking awesome, man. But uh, enough of that sappy yeah. shit. Um, <laughs> when when is show up show up coming back? Uh, because you got you're getting your boat rigged this week, correct? I think so. I say. Um, because you've really been leaning on that excuse. Oh, yeah, I, don't I, have a boat. I don't have a boat. But now, last year you didn't have a boat, and he had pawpaws for a couple but this of year, episodes. But, but this I got, year, I got, I, I got, got beat. I, I got beat heavily. And since then, you've um, further equipped yourself learning live scope. And I don't want to go into a tournament without live scope. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm with that. And I know you're not just going to be like, well, I'll just not use it today. Because we talked about it in the video. I was like, I will never get in a boat ever again without turning that on. I'm confident. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous, dude. Like, it's it, it's frustrating, too, because you get to see how smart bass are a lot of times, too, on some of these pressured fisheries that we fish. But, yeah, I would never have a boat without forward-facing sonar ever again, whether that's four feet of water or 40. Yeah, like especially, 40. Four, especially 40. Especially 40. Especially 40 fresh uh, Wiggins didn't Wiggins win a uh, there was a tournament over the winter time that Wiggins won Jordan Wiggins won there was a team championship in Florida I believe Jordan Wiggins won it oh it was uh, yeah Harris he Harris won it train, right yeah and he and he talked about that day they were fli- like he was flipping a reed line a yeah. head hard reed line and he says that he panned out saw a fish threw a china bear over there and caught it and it was like a five and a half pounder mm-hmm. and like that he won that whole tournament yeah gets to go to the classic yeah, I guess you go to the Bassmaster Classic yeah. for buying a $1,900 <laughs> transducer, which everyone doesn't want to pay that. No one wants to pay that. But if you catch that fish, now he's living his childhood dream. That's right. For $1,900. I would have never seen it. Uh, that fish would have, yeah, it's, it's changed everything. I had a conversation. Oh, man, I forgot to say this in the beginning, and this reminded me. I brought him up once. Jimmy Houston uh, had a conversation with Jimmy over a week ago uh talked to him and his lovely wife chris and i wanted to say thoughts and prayers to them chris had a stroke uh jimmy wasn't there not to just totally you know but i i I gotta say that they're great people to me but what i was going to say about jimmy is jimmy is obsessed with live scope now and to hear this guy who's everybody's fishing hero talking about what it's taught him about bass behavior and it was one of the most enlightening conversations i've ever had with anybody in the fishing world and i've been fortunate enough obviously through the show and off the air to have a lot of them just like you have with a lot of our heroes we're we're very lucky dudes but jimmy was just telling me all these things and it was so cool to think that like this guy who's seen it all like he's dude he's, he's yeah. been around since the beginning of bass is learning something is learning something because of this new technology and has embraced it um very very cool but I actually I, I talked to jimmy and his wife chris and then there's a few days later and i actually told my dad jimmy invited me out to the ranch this summer he actually said we need to collab <laughs> i swear 
which I loved. He's, he's like, I got this YouTube. You know, I only got 90,000 people on it. It's not that big of a deal. I'm trying to, he was actually going fishing with Edwin Everett. So I'm trying to get Edwin some followers. <laughs> said, I swear. That's what Jimmy told me. But he's like, come out, you know. And him and his wife have invited me out there several times. I've never gone. And my dad and I actually had the conversation. I said, you know, I'm going to, I need to go. Like, yeah. so my childhood heroes. Then the next week, uh, I, I got a text that, you know, the horrible news had happened. I'm not sure as of today, Monday, April 12th, what the status is. I've texted Jimmy. He's texted me back about it. I uh, just said, hey, we, you know, we love y'all and praying for y'all, thinking about y'all. He is, uh, he is without a doubt. He is as advertised. There are some people on TV and fishing, not fishing. Whether it's musicians, whether it's whatever, athletes, they're not what they are on camera, off camera. Jimmy is not that guy. Yeah, he's not that guy. I think that's safe to say, right? Yeah, yeah for sure, definitely. Because there are people that, like, you know, that aren't. But I think that Jimmy is, for sure, indeed. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to share a best tea with your bestie. <laughs> Have y'all sweet tea. Y'all, I'm going to take y'all out with some uh, Biloxi Blues. Like always, Darian's going to sing with his y'all sweet tea. I hate the fact that when I wake up some mornings, I'm like, damn these Biloxi. I, I, I got to get in that head. It stays in that head. It's annoying, dude. I'm like, I talk to Luke every morning. I see his dumb posts on, on Instagram. And then I, I catch myself You're singing like, below. You Blues don't even the watch the podcast because you get an hour podcast every morning. Like, you know yeah. what I got going on. You know who I talk to. I tell you about the podcast. So you yeah. don't even listen. You don't even listen. Uh, what's weird for me. I did listen to your last podcast. Yeah. There were a lot of people that did. Like, I don't know. I'm not starting that. No, I'm um, not starting that. I'm just saying there were a lot of people that listened. There were a lot of people that reached out, and I appreciated every single person. There was a lot of great comments, out. too. A lot of great comments. Uh, I had a lot of people privately reach out to me. I had a lot of people uh, DM me. A lot of people text me, and a lot of people comment publicly, and I appreciated that. Because what was crazy in that situation to kind of air stuff out, but also kind of go at trolls, I guess, a little bit, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Um it's a small percentage of people. You always feel like it's that, but they still, it still kind of pisses you off or gets under your skin. You and I have yeah. these conversations a lot. But in that moment when you throw it out there and you're like, I'm doing this podcast because these people did this. And then you see the comments where everybody's like, yes, yeah, screw those people, dude. Like, yeah. it's overwhelming, yeah. right? And you and you see, you, you know, of course there were still some that were like, you're, you're you know, whatever. Um, but... It was just freaking overwhelming, man. And I just hope that, uh, you know, I can keep doing things that people enjoy and uh, drinking sweet tea. Yeah. And like the support during like something like that, or even just like comments, like you guys commenting on videos. And even if it's just your opinion of, man, Luca, I think you made the right move. Or in a respectful, like we're, we're real humans. Respectfully, Luke, I, I disagree with you. It's yeah, yeah. fine to disagree. Oh, totally. But when it goes to that next level, dude, it's like I, ne I just never, I would never be able to put a a, a grasp on why. Yeah. That happened. Well, and my, and my thing is, was I think a commentator said this like in an NBA game when somebody got dunked on one time. Like, oh, oh my God, he's got a family or whatever. Yeah. Like one of those things. But it is, it's yeah. like that. It's like, hey, a uh, real person. Uh, I doubt you would walk up to me at Publix, you know, the grocery store. I'm in the produce, and you're like. Hey, why'd you dump Dave Mercer, you piece of shit? You're like, you're never going to do that. <laughs> you're never going to do that. So uh, you might come up to me and say, hey, man, I really enjoyed that. Oh, I hate you. But you're never going to word it like you do on the Internet um, because you probably value your teeth. <laughs> and that's what I always uh, – I had a couple of people was like, you can tell some of these people ain't never had their butt whipped. I'm like, yes, yeah, you know, it's probably somebody, true. Didn't somebody text you that about me, actually? About you? Yeah. You can tell he's who never. did who did say that? Yeah, somebody said that. You you no, somebody commented that. I think on one of our videos. You can tell he's never had his ass whipped <laughs> the way he acts. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either because we're just us. Good, you yeah. know. If we could ever air everything that we record, no oh boy, we'd be Damn. canceled. Y'all think that last podcast could canceled? Canceled. How, canceled. How, long, how long have we how long have we been podcasting? I feel like we could talk Over for an hour. hours. No, no. I know we could. I'm saying we could. Oh, we could. Because I, I wanted to get in a cancel culture, but cancel culture, that's the scariest thing on the internet. Scariest thing. Like in the, the world, David, not it's, just the it's internet. The scary, I mean, like, the fact that David Dobrik just became, like... Irrelevant almost. Scratched. Yep. Completely off. Scoop. Over oh. something that... Yeah. Over just, just a comment man. about something. Yeah. It's, uh... 
It's interesting. And I and I've dealt with it with like the people with me from my history or like the major league fishing stuff or whatever that are just like immediately just say you're that because of this, right? Yeah. That that kind of thing. Um, you're a hater just because yeah, you talked yeah, about yeah. MLF one time. Or or you or bring multiple up times. multiple times, but I bring up things that are going on fishing news yeah. and it's like I, I don't know, you know, but you definitely get cast into that. And so when you really mess up in this day and time, like a tweet or, and we all get like emotional and people like, yeah. you want to fire something out there, you get mad at whatever. Ah, don't like this. Well, dude, you're just, yeah. whatever side of the fence you're on, on whatever subject it is. <laughs> I, I, one, I mean, I could just keep going on. I love talking, but. The, the MLF thing. Oh, well, I want to talk about that. But just <laughs> like, no, but here, I was fixing to wrap it up. I wasn't. I wasn't. I won't, no, okay. no, no, this I'll isn't going to go too deep. This isn't going to go too deep. Because I got it recently, a comment that you're just hating on MLF. Dude, I, Luke has some skin in the game because he has to, like, you have, well, I say Luke, you have to talk about fishing news. Sometimes the fact that these pro anglers don't like their boats, that is the news right now. But as as a fan, I have just as much. Actually, I truly have more guys that fish MLF that personally I like or that I follow on social media. Like personally, I actually do have more people that I enjoy watching on MLF. I just don't like their format and I don't like their other things. Yeah. So it's like it's su- it it sucks being grouped into you're just an MLF hater. Like maybe maybe yes, but like I enjoy the fishing part. I enjoy watching Jordan Lee. Like J- Jordan's one of the top two or three guys that I like to watch personally, and it's like. Just because you have an opinion of, in, like, I still watch it. <laughs> that was yeah, to- yeah, and, and there's a big mis- misconception with people with me. They're like, you know, you want it to fail. Yeah, you just want it to fail. And I'm like, no, that's not the case at all. Like, I, I didn't want it to go down like it went down. I think I didn't want the FLW thing necessarily to be how it has been. And what and and like a lot of things that I kind of threw out there as opinions are what have happened. Uh, you know, but ultimately, man, like there's going to be a lot of guys that um, like if it fails, uh, if it were to fail, and I don't think it will. There's a lot of very smart and talented people involved in this. I think they make really bad decisions sometimes. And I think that uh, the confusion, what we talked about, I yeah. think hurts them. But like I can say that and not be a quote hater right yeah. um or poke fun here and there because lord knows they do it back my way too just i yeah. mean like it, it happens, <laughs> yeah. right like it, it does like it it is what it is man but uh um you know i i the term hater is uh that's uh, that's funny that's in a lot of my comments like screw the haters luke and i'm just like yeah i just i don't like to say i got haters but uh the term's weird. I the feel term like is weird. Whatever the term is, you definitely do have them, though. Oh, I got them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got them. You got more, though. So I hate you. <laughs> Luke, Luke, be, Luke be driving you. people to hate me yeah. steadily. Yeah. De- yeah, 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 yeah. You had a guy just basically, like, you did finally have to block a guy. Yeah. And just steady. A super Luke man I blocked s- yesterday. <laughs> and the funny thing is, he's my best friend. <laughs> And I make people on the internet think he's a piece of garbage. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like the people that send you messages after show up, shut up. They're like, and that, now listen, that is as serious as anything we do. And take it as serious as any Bassmaster tournament or FLW <laughs> I've ever been in. All right. I'm, I'm freaking fired up all day long. Every time I catch you, I'll watch the videos. But and I can't stand getting, if he beats me, whatever. The amount of people reached out to him were like, hey, buddy. It's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. <laughs> hey, we got your back. <laughs> like you were about to jump I, off a bridge. I'm going to stop watching Luke. <laughs> I'm going to stop watching. He's, I hate him. He beats you with that buzz bait. I don't even like Tennessee. <laughs> I don't even like Tennessee. I don't even like sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a bunch of people probably going to watch it. Yeah, because you're a hater. Are we ending the podcast Let's now? Let's end it. Okay. That was good. That was a lot of fun. It was fun, man. I, I'm, I appreciate you having me down here. Just a quick little, you know, couple hour drive <laughs> to see D Money. That's how deprived people are now from seeing their friends. I think because of 2020, we're like, you know, it's April 2021. You've seen your buddies like three times in the last freaking 14 months. Like, I've got, yeah, dude, podcast your place. I'll load up all my crap and come down there. And that's what we did, man. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this every week, for keeping up with Darian stuff, keeping up with my stuff. I appreciate it. The support has been overwhelming. I think I can say the same for him based off of some things he's told me about 
how many people are reaching out about this team, man. It's it's very cool to see um, people supporting other good people, and uh, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And we'll take you out with Biloxi Blues, song written by me, sung by me. For those of you that ask who it is in the comments every week, that's who it is. Luke Duncan, Biloxi Blues, iTunes, Spotify, the whole nine. You can get it on there. Listen to it on YouTube. You can listen to it right here. Sing it in the shower. Sing it in the shower. It's a great shower song. Weir- it? Weirdly, I, I... Really? That's... I'd be singing in the shower often, too often. I'm out. And he's out, ladies and gentlemen. Hug your mama. Hug your daddy. D-Money's out. Thank y'all so much. Get you some y'all sweet tea. And uh, I will see y'all next time. Spanish moss is still your ghost. Well, I'm going to leave them in the past. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows, I'm leaving those burdens in red. This highway, it does not know my name, and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place, and I got three good tires and a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get.